Yo, it's Bo. Welcome back to Kerbal Star Frontiers. Just a recap of the past couple episodes, we launched our interstellar vehicle, the KSS Bova, from our launch site on the Moon, headed for the red dwarf system Aethera. About two and a half Kerbal light years away, we arrived 10 years later and landed on the lava planet Surther and have since also visited the super Venus type planet Vespin, where we landed a surface rover that miraculously survived the surface landing without parachutes and is exploring the surface. And that's a recap of the series so far. Here we are in orbit around Vespin after completing the rover mission, about to set out for the third planet in the Aethera system, Kretel, which is a rocky planet. It's actually a core world, meaning it probably had some thick atmosphere, it used to be a gas giant at some point, but the solar wind of the star blew it all away. And what we're left with is this really dense, rocky core of a formerly more magnificent planet but that's gonna come with some interesting surface features one of the most prominent things on Kretel's surface are giant emerald and crimson crystals from the dense chemistry and internal composition of the planet which is really cool we're going to be exploring that today but here we are in flight with our trajectory to intercept Kretel we're going to be doing some mid-course correction maneuvers, but while I get that sorted out, I just want to say, hey guys, if you're enjoying this series so far or like my Kerbal Space Program videos, please consider subscribing. I'm trying to reach 10K subscribers by the end of the year, and only about a quarter of you guys are subscribed, so make sure to hit that subscribe button to catch future episodes in the series when they come out, and uh, yeah, thanks guys. All right, here we are entering the orbit of Kretel. We're getting our first look at it from orbit. Looks like a dense rocky world with some uh, interesting craters and striations. We can't see its uh, prominent crystal crater from this angle, but as we circularize into an orbit around Kretel, uh, we'll be able to see it. It's on the other side of the planet right now in the northern hemisphere. So. Uh, once we've circularized and orbited the planet it's right above the ship now it's that green spot so yeah it's a giant crater with an exposed look at the internal core of the planet which is itself just the solid core of a former gas giant with its atmosphere blown away by the solar wind but what's caused these crystals is probably the intense pressure and heat that exists in the depths of a gas giant just like how they say uh, intense heat and pressure is what makes crystals and uh, diamonds on earth it's that same sort of process that's going on and we've got two of our kerbals into one of our low gravity vacuum landers we've detached from the mothership and have started our retrograde burn to put us on a collision course with the surface but we're going to be burning one of the normal or anti-normal directions to adjust our orbit to intercept that of the crystal crater, which is coming up over the horizon as we orbit around the planet. It's maybe that, yeah, there's the ridge of it over the surface, and we gotta manage our speed as we come in uh, so we can land right in the center of all these crystals. We're just about to pass over the crest of the crater. That's a better look at it. You can see that green surface when we get closer, the crystal formations will begin to appear as we enter within the parallax scattered loading range. Here they are. These are added by the excellent parallax continued mod that adds surface detail scatter to all of the planets in Kerbal Space Program and Kerbal Star Systems too. We're coming in for our landing. You can see these crystals. As we get closer, we realize just how huge they are. They're like multiple stories tall, you guys. And we're gonna be choosing this semi-flat spot for our landing. I always try to finesse these landings as much as possible by coming to a really soft landing. That was pretty good. And here we are, safely touched down on the surface of Kretel and the exposed crystal crater, no less. We'll check it out from the inside of the lander before we uh, get out there ourselves, but we're just down the ladder, boots on the ground on our third interstellar planet in this series so far. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to check those out as well. I've got them in the playlist as part of the Kerbal Star Frontier series where I'm going to be exploring a bunch of interstellar planet packs for KSP. But here we are doing some science. You guys can check out those readouts. They talk about how the planet is extra dense for its size and that the materials of the surface and the crystals are of metals and alloys and other materials that we would be unable to synthesize ourselves in our Kerbal labs. 
All that's pretty interesting to our Kerbals, I'm sure, but what they're really looking forward to is climbing one of these things themselves. So here we are, walking towards the nearest emerald pillar jutting out from the surface. Actually, I'm not sure if it's made of emerald, but it, it looks emerald. Like, this stuff is something out of the Wizard of Oz, for real. But yeah, this thing's like, I don't know, at least 11 stories tall, Kerbal-wise. Fell off. Well, you know, second time's a charm, I guess. We'll get to the top for sure. Sorry if the video feed gets a little jank from here on out, but that's how climbing works in Kerbal Space Program. I'll leave you to a little montage of that until we get to the top. All right, skipped ahead till we've reached our first major ledge on the pillar. And check out that view. There's got to be hundreds of crystal pillars in this crater. This is a first-person view of the view from the mod through the eyes of a Kerbal or something like that, which is also a dependency of free IVA. We're going to keep climbing, though, because it's not the top. We can get even higher. And, yeah, this, you know, this pillar is not even the tallest one here. And uh, the views are crazy. Like, for real, guys, this is not something you we'll find back in the Kerbal system. Like this crystal pillar here is like nowhere near even the biggest of the ones here. And check out that view. Was it worth the two and a half Kerbal light years away? I think so, because we get to do stuff like this in classic Kerbal fashion. Uh, and he's, you know, he's probably fine. This planet's only about the size of Duna. Uh, although I think it has higher gravity, so probably didn't hurt that bad. And our suit's not ruptured, so all's well that ends well. We can head back to the lander now. We can begin our final surface activities, like planting the flag, leaving our mark on the planet forever, because flags and Kerbal Space Program are immovable forces of indestructible matter, which is fun fact. So here we are. In the lander, we'll get buckled back into our seat, raise the ladder, and lift off the surface. We're just going to try to head due uh, west. Right. Yeah, because the orbits in the Aethera system are actually in the retrograde direction of the way that the planets in Kerbal orbit. So we're orbiting in the opposite direction um, to preserve, you know, the angular momentum of the system itself. It costs less delta V to get into orbits in this way because you don't have to cancel out the spin of the planets itself uh, if you're going to be orbiting in the opposite direction. But here we are. We've got our orbit to about a 30 kilometer altitude above the surface. And, you know, we're on a pretty inclined orbit relative to the interstellar vehicle. But we've got a ton of fuel, so it's going to be fine. We're just setting up an inclination matching maneuver on the night side. So unfortunately, again, we're kind of going to be docking on the night side most likely this time around. But we've just about got that maneuver set up. We're on a zero degree separation, or just about, and we're coming in on our second orbit. We're just going to burn retrograde relative to the target. That's going to bring those close flyby maneuvers next to each other. We're going to wait one more orbit. We're kind of passing above the surface on a pretty low altitude on that pass around, but here we are less than a kilometer out, and there the ISV is in the skies above Credle. But once we've killed off the rest of our speed, we can dock this thing back to the mothership and uh, because my ship has kind of an uncomfortably large part count and we're not super concerned with bringing these empty landers all the way back to Kerbal and the Kerbin system at the end of this, we're going to uh, just, you know, get our Kerbals back into the ISV. Then we're going to ditch the empty lander, which will actually reduce the part count that the game has to load in for this craft. And it'll make performance better in future videos. So that'll be great. And we've docked our lander successfully to the ISV. We'll transfer those guys back into their crew quarters. In the next episode, we're going to be going to the probably most habitable world in the Aethera system called Tesher. We're going to be dropping a base on the surface and doing some science to see if it's a viable colonization target for Kerbals. If that sounds cool to you guys, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to catch it. And I'll see you guys next time.